Hey, it's Marcus, and welcome to another episode of Between the Bellows. Today, I'm going to give a quick overview of how I use a light meter for a portrait and why I prefer to use a spot meter when I shoot. I'm guessing if you're watching this, you have a basic understanding of what f-stops are on your camera. My portrait subject today is myself, so I will be taking an 8x10 selfie on Ilford FP4 inside a downtown LA photo studio. So let's jump right in. So let's say you have your subject and you're ready to take a portrait. You know where the light is coming from, but you want to find out what the meter reading is. So you can first use an incident meter, which measures the amount of light falling onto the subject. And so with this half dome sphere here, I can measure with my settings on the camera and the film speed that on the light side from the window, I'm getting an eight and a half, an F eight and a half from the key side. And on the shadow side, I would take a meter reading. And that's coming up at an F4. And so maybe I might shoot this at an F5.6 because I know I have a one stop difference on the shadow side and I can let the key side go one stop over. And so now that I know my ratio, I know how I can decide my exposure. And one thing I wanna point out is that the meter is just a tool. So just because it says F8 on the key side, that does not mean you have to set it to F8 on your camera. You ultimately get to decide what exposure and what look you want for your photograph. So now you know your values of light. You know you have an F8 coming from the key side and you have an F4 coming in from the shadow side. You could set it to a 5.6 and you might have a properly exposed camera and everything would probably be just fine. But in certain situations, that might not always work. Because what if your subject is wearing something like this. Now what do you do? Because the light falling on the subject is still an F8 from the key side, and it's still an F4 on the shadow side. Except you have all these reflective highlights that you have to deal with now. And that brings up my favorite way of metering for a scene and a portrait, and it's using a spot meter. And what this does is I can accurately point to things in the distance and I can see what values, either the bright areas or the dark areas, are being bounced back into the camera. It works just like your phone and just like a DSLR mirrorless camera to use when you're metering to take a photo. There are plenty of light meters out there, just like this one from Siconic, which has an incident meter and a spot meter built into it. You pop out this sphere when you're ready to take a light meter reading, and if you want to avoid spill coming in from other sources, you can always leave it retracted. Now, if what you're shooting is far away, backlit, or has lots of reflective surfaces and hotspots, that's when reflective metering really comes in handy. When you set this to spot metering, there's a little circle inside the viewfinder and anything you point it at will give you an f-stop measurement. And what's nice about this meter is that you can take multiple readings of a scene and then hit this button and it will give you an f-stop that's an average of all of those readings combined. And it will show you on a scale how many stops over you are and under you are from that f-stop. But the meter I mainly use now and love is this Pentax digital spot meter. There's no incident meter in this, and when you look through the viewfinder and press the trigger, the meter will give you an exposure value in the form of a number between 1 and 20. So there's no f-stops when you look through it, just number values. I might point at something bright in the distance and it will say 12, and something darker and it will say 6. But once I know those EV numbers in a shot, I can look at the analog scale on top of the meter and it will correspond to an f-stop and shutter speed. If I want a different shutter or f-stop, I can quickly reference it without having to do this math in my head. It's all right there at a quick glance. Of course, nowadays there are light meter apps on your phone that can work as a great reflective light meter if you use it properly. And you can always bring a DSLR or your digital mirrorless camera to pre-visualize the shot on an actual screen, just like how photographers used to shoot Polaroids and proof their shots beforehand. So here I am, now in the studio metering for the wall, my hand, the reflective parts of my outfit, and figuring an f-stop that I know can hold the range of all those exposure values. Okay, got my light meter readings. Hopefully I'm in focus. Everything's kind of eyeballed and winging it here today. And relaxed, and here we go in three, two, one. Whew. All right, hopefully it came out. Thank you. 
So I am really happy with how this turned out. I decided to shoot this at an f8. The wall behind me was reading one stop under at f5.6. The bright side of my face was at an f8. The highlights on my jacket were two stops over at f16. And the shadows were two stops under at f4. All the darker parts of the floor were reading around an f2.8. So as you can see, there's a lot to consider when setting an f-stop on your camera. Keep this in mind when you want more control over your image. Maybe you want something that's a little more moody or something that's in complete silhouette. Ultimately, the meter is just a tool and the aperture setting is up to you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next episode of Between the Bellows. Thanks.